Hey, what's up guys? Matt here from Laid Laws, Harley-Davidson. Been serving the Los Angeles area for over 60 years now. So today I'm going to be talking to you guys about a new enhancement that Harley-Davidson made on all their touring bikes with the exception of the Electrobyte Standard. So they came out with something called the RDRS. It stands for the Reflex Defensive Rider System. It's basically a collection of electronic chassis control items. So I'm gonna be kind of going into details with you guys a little bit and trying to really communicate to you guys exactly what it is you get in the RDRS and give you guys kind of the most complete overview of this new package that I possibly can. I spent a lot of time talking to the engineers at the dealer meeting. It comes as an option on all of your touring bikes, again, with the exception of the Electric Light Standard and it's 995 US dollars for the RDRS. Let's get into this. I'm gonna to talk to you guys a little bit about exactly what you get with this RDRS package and you know, kind of talking about some of the, the major concerns as well. Like I've had a couple of people ask me if they feel like this, these electronics are too intrusive and so I'm gonna kind of give you my opinion as well. All right, before I get on the bike and demo some of the features on the RDRS, I wanna go over to harleydavidson.com. They have a really nice section on their website that talks about all the detailed features of the Reflex Defensive Rider System. But I wanna just kinda of go through some of the things here and explain it to you as clear as I can just so there's really no question as to exactly what you get in the system here. So the Reflex Defensive Rider System is a new collection of technology designed to match motorcycle performance to available traction during acceleration deceleration and braking. The systems are designed to aid the rider in controlling the vehicle while accelerating and braking in a straight line or while in a turn. The rider may find the systems most helpful when riding in adverse road conditions in urgent situations. The systems are electronic and utilize the latest electronic brake controls and powertrain technology. So basically they come standard on the live wire, all the CVOs and the police motorcycles and the trike models standard and they are an option for $995 on all the other touring bikes with the exception of the electric bike standard like I mentioned already. So first off, analog braking system. So ABS, nothing new here. ABS is standard on all the touring bikes now. So there's nothing new here. You get this ABS feature regardless if you have the RDR or not I just want to make that clear but you know part of this bundle is you do have ABS which is the anti-lock braking system a couple things that are notable about the ABS is it is independent front and rear meaning the ABS system will engage in the front wheel but not necessarily in the rear wheel which is can't be said for all makes of motorcycles so what is unique to the RDRS is the cornering enhanced ABS so the, the way that they enhance the ABS in the corner is the RDRS, these bikes are equipped with an IMU. It stands for an inertia movement unit. So what this does is it measures the lateral, forwards and backwards and up and down movement of the motorcycle. So it's a six axis uh, movement unit that measures those things. And some of you that watched my trike video last year may have seen me describe this because this unit was available on the trikes last year. The next thing is the electronic linked braking. And that's this is nothing new. This is standard on all the touring bikes. So you do not need to get the RDRS to get the linked braking system. And this actually came out in the 2014 model year when the Project Rushmore was, was launched. The Project Rushmore project. M many of you probably remember the 2014 model year. So basically how the linked braking works is if you just apply just the rear brake exclusively or just the front brake exclusively, it will also apply a little bit of pressure to the opposite brake. So what that does is it kind of equalizes out the braking. What Harley Davidson found is that people are either a heavy front breaker or a heavy rear breaker. And so they weren't getting the best braking performance that their bike had to offer. And therefore, you know, they just was underperforming just mostly due to rider error. So they've now allowed for some linking there. Now it doesn't apply 100% on the front if you're just applying in the rear, but it definitely uh, links it. So in addition to the linked braking, you also now have cornering enhanced link braking. So again, the IMU comes into play where the bike can tell if you're in a turn and the bike is at a lean angle and it will tailor your ABS braking in addition to cornering enhanced braking, it will tailor the braking experience to the situation you're in. So here's a little video here and basically what they're doing is they're demonstrating the red rider is someone who doesn't have the cornering enhanced link braking and the gray rider is someone who has it. So it's, it's basically designed to make you stop quicker and hold your line better as well. And that can be said about the ABS as well, the cornering enhanced ABS. Really it's designed to brake based on you having less available traction in a turn. For those of you who have studied motorcycling and turning, know that when you're turning you have less available traction which is why it's easier to skip the wheel 
wheel out, which leads me to my next point is you have traction control with the RDRS uh, and you also have cornering enhanced traction control. So this is a good illustration of a rider going through a turn. He maybe hits the throttle a little bit too hard and the bike fishtails out behind him. This is a common accident that can occur, especially on slick roads in the, in the motorcycle world. So what the traction control does is it reduces the power to the rear wheel. And I'm gonna be demoing this in just a second. With the cornering enhanced traction control, it also takes into consideration that you're in, in the middle of a corner and that you have reduced available traction. The traction control will intervene according to whether if you're going in a straight line or also in a turn. So you've got traction control, but also cornering enhanced traction control. So the next thing here is drag torque slip control. This one I was a little bit fuzzy on at first, but now that I've studied it, I completely understand it. So basically what this is, it's kind of the opposite of traction control, is if your wheel is, is spinning too slowly for how fast your bike is rolling down the road. And a common occurrence when this might happen is if you downshift once or twice rapidly and let out the clutch too quickly, and and, and you can see here in the demonstration, Harley Davidson has a pretty cool demonstration here. In a lot of cases, if you do this on a normal bike, uh, your wheel speed will cause the rear end to start fishtailing and you're gonna lose control. Now, I don't have this problem that much, just because I've, I've been riding for a long time and I this is just kind of a rider error in my opinion, but if you're going down the road, maybe you downshift too much, and especially in a, in a turn, you know, some people might downshift in a turn and let that, that clutch out too fast and the, the rear wheel isn't spinning quick enough. What the drag torque slip control is gonna do is it's gonna add some torque to the rear wheel and let that wheel, rear wheel slip or spin more when compared to how much throttle you're giving it. So it, basically the bike will add a little extra torque or throttle to the bike and to the, the drivetrain to make that wheel spin so that you don't lose control. And that is also cornering enhanced as well. So this is kind of a cool feature. It's called vehicle hold control. I've never even heard of this. I guess this is available on some other motorcycles out there. But basically how this works is if you're on like a hill, like an incline or something like that, what you can do is you can apply steady pressure to either the front or the rear brake and it will engage the hold mode which basically applies the brakes I believe it's the rear brake and it will keep the bike from rolling it will basically keep the bike stationary and so you can relieve yourself of pressing either the front brake or rear brake and you'll have you know full use of your your hand and your right foot at that point you don't have to worry about the bike drifting back on you the other thing that's nice too is when you go to take off you don't have to worry about kind of the synchronized dance that you have to play with letting off the brake and also finding that friction zone and giving it the throttle you know, I remember learning how to drive a stick shift car and you know, if you got a guy like really close behind you and to try to like let off the brake and then also let out the clutch real quick and give it the proper throttle, you know, it was kind of intimidating, especially for new riders or, or new drivers in like a manual transmission car. So this will take away that problem. Never really had that problem on a motorcycle personally. I, maybe it's just because I rode at a young age, but I can imagine newer riders on a hill like this, especially when you don't have a really good firm feet on the ground, especially with like a passenger on the back, you know, an English Incline can be an intimidating situation. So holding that brake and engaging that hold mode to keep the bike from rolling backwards or forwards is kind of a cool feature. And I demo that in just a second. It works really well. So the last thing that's kind of traction unrelated is the tire pressure monitoring system. So this is a system you get with the RDRS package that does not come on the other bikes that aren't equipped with the package. So this is very similar to like the CVOs of the past. Uh, basically, it's all integrated in your infotainment system here. There's an additional menu with the little tire pressure. This right here to let you know that your tire pressure is low by the way so if you see this you know that the tire pressure is low but this is the screen here that lets you know what your PSI is in both your tires. You've also got where your odometer is displayed. It will tell you as well what your front and rear tire pressure is on your right below your speedometer. And they've had this system on the CVOs now for several years, but yeah, now you can get it on the other touring bikes as well. All right, guys, so I'm going to go into some of the close-ups on the gauges and the controls and kind of explain to you exactly how the traction control works and what to look for on the gauges and everything. So first off, there is a TC button or a little logo above the horn button there. If you have that button on your bike, you know right away that your bike is equipped with the RDRS. If you don't, do not see that TC or traction control button there, you know right away that this motorcycle, your touring motorcycle does not have the RDRS on it. So I'm gonna fire it up, turn on the ignition there. You see all the lights illuminate 
and the speedometer and the tachometer goes all the way to max and back. Visually, it's a little bit different the way that the bikes start up now. You can see the TC button or traction control light flashing there. That means that it is ready to go. The system is ready to go. Once you start rolling down the road at about 10 miles an hour, that light will turn off. That lets you know that traction control is enabled and ready to go. If I were to hold the TC button down, and the light stays solidly lit, then I, then you know the traction control is off. If you click it once, like I just did, you'll see that blue rain cloud illuminate there. That is rain mode. You have two modes of traction control on this bike. You have rain mode, which you know is on if the cloud is there, and you have road mode, which if you see no cloud, that means it's in road mode. Or if you just turn, if you hold down the TC button and you see a solid TC light on, that means the traction control has been disabled. So you can completely turn off the traction control system on this bike if for whatever reason you don't want to have it on. Like if you want to do a fat burnout or something like that, you can turn it off. I was showing the ABS light there as well. The ABS light will flash when the bike is not going down the road. Once the bike goes down the road, the ABS light will turn off just the same as the TC mode. Okay, I'm gonna hold down the TC button, the traction control button, and it's gonna make the light solid. Okay, so now that the light is solid, you know the traction control is disabled. So once you turn on the ignition, but you're not rolling down the road yet, it will blink. When you're rolling down the road, it will disappear completely, and that lets you know the traction control is on. So I'm gonna hold down the button again. Now it's blinking once again. So that, that means the system is ready. Once I start rolling down the road at about 15 miles an hour or more, light will become deilluminated or turn off, and you know it's, it's good to go. The ABS as well. The ABS light will turn off once you get going down the road. If the ABS light is lit up, even when the bike is in motion, you know the ABS system is disabled for whatever reason. You want to take it to your dealer and check it out. So you know, while I'm at it too, just that oil light and the engine light as well, they're on until you get rolling down the road, then they shut off. If they stay on when you're rolling down the road, you know there's a problem there. So I wanted to demo the traction control. I really wanted to get a feel for what happened if the rear wheel lost traction due to too much throttle. So I found a slick spot in the parking lot and I really just wanted to kind of get a feel for how the electronics, you know, what they felt like when they intervened in that type of a wheel slip situation. And I had Nick film me with a slow motion camera and you know, I don't really feel like visually you can really tell a whole lot, but I got a couple shots on my GoPro and you can kind of listen to the engine and that's probably the best kind of indicator of what happens when the electronics intervene in a wheel slip situation. Best thing I traction control. <laughs> So you can kind of hear how the engine cuts power. When I engage the throttle and take off, I never once let off. And so you'll hear in this clip, the engine get reduced a little bit, and that is the traction control taking over and you know cutting power to the engine momentarily until I have you know, regained traction. So you can kind of see that way, and you can kind of see the wheel spinning a little bit in the slow motion shots that Nick got as well. You know, it, it does work, it, it works well. It's like impossible to, you know, break the rear wheel loose for more than a split second with the traction control on. Looking back, you know, I probably would have tried it in rain mode as well. If you have the bike in rain mode, it's even more sensitive. Yeah, I'm assuming that even with less wheel slippage, the electronics are gonna intervene quicker and more aggressively as well. Alright guys, so I want to demo the hold mode for you real quick. So I'm going to go on a little bit of an incline here. It's not a really big incline where I typically would need to use it, but it's steep enough where the hold mode will work for us. I'm going to go up on the incline a little bit here. Okay, so if I don't brake, the wheel, the bike's going to roll backwards, okay? It's rolling backwards so I don't hit the brakes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply firm pressure to the brake and it, it pulsates for a second and then that that yellow H illuminates on the dash there. So when the yellow H illuminates, now I'm not holding the brakes at all. I don't have my rear brake hit, I don't have my front brake hit, and the bike is just staying still. So it's not going anywhere. Now, as soon as I go to take off, as soon as I let out the clutch and go to take off, it automatically disengages it, and now I'm rolling again. So if I want to do it again, let's see if the rear pedal works. That's it, the rear one works as well. You can push down hard on the rear pedal and it will engage the hold mode just the same. So front or rear, 
I'm told that it will stay in hold mode for about five minutes and then it will disengage automatically. So very, very easy to use. As soon as I want to take off, I'm just going to let the clutch out, give it some throttle, it'll take off really simply. But yeah, this would be very cool, like, on, on a, this would be very cool on a steep, oh, I shut the bike out and I was rolling backwards. So like on a really steep hill, especially when you have a passenger on the back or something like that, you don't want to continually hold the brake the entire time. Maybe you're, you're waiting at a stoplight or something like that. You just give it a really firm press, put it in hold mode, and then you have you know use of both your hands. So yeah, pretty cool feature. I'm, I'm really impressed. This is the first time I've ever used it. So it works well, really easy to use, real intuitive, really easy to disengage it. So that's, yeah, it's a pretty cool feature. I'm really happy with it. Uh, let me show you guys another thing on the infotainment system here. So if you go to the home menu here, you hit the I button. Now there's a new icon here, which is your tire pressure. So you have a tire pressure monitoring system here. So this will tell you the, the PSI in both your front and rear tires. So this is a brand new item or feature that you get with the RDRS. So I really wanted to demo the drag torque slip control as well but I'm working with brand new bikes here and I don't want to do anything that's even remotely abusive to these motorcycles. It's everything against everything in my nature to be going down the road at 40 miles an hour and drop two, two gears and dump the clutch to see if the rear wheel will, will spin instead of skidding. And so I, I didn't do it, I didn't try to demo it, but you know, if once I get a demo unit in my fleet and I, I do some of my test ride videos, I may try to get it, I do it when I'm out on the open road or something like that. But yeah, that's pretty much the only thing that I didn't really demonstrate in this video is the drag torque slip control again that's if the rear wheel isn't spinning fast enough whether you be shutting off the throttle real quick and engine braking making the rear wheel slip which is highly unlikely unless the roads are really slick but more likely if you drop a couple gears and let the clutch out quickly and you're moving too quickly down the road when compared to your wheel speed. But anyways, guys, I appreciate you watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. If I forgot anything, let me know and maybe I'll, I'll add a comment to the comment section to kind of uh, add more to this video. It seems like I always forget something every video. But I hope this uh, gives you guys a real good idea of how the Reflex Defensive Rider System works. Uh, just to FYI, I, I strongly urge you guys, if you're going out and buying a touring bike, really make sure that you look at the tag and look at the bike look at that switch and, and know if you're either getting it or you're not getting it i predict that there will be a lot of bikes sold this model year to customers who are completely oblivious to this feature and oblivious to whether or not they're buying it or not and so pay attention to that switch and, and really be educated on if you want that system or not me personally i'm ordering probably 90 percent of all my bikes with the rdrs on it i'm a believer in it i think it's good i think it would be hard to make a strong argument not to buy it I mean for a thousand more dollars when you're spending you know twenty three thousand dollars or more on a touring bike to not get it just because of the cost um, I think it's kind of silly I think there's still gonna be some of those people out there that are, are have their guard up about it you know we had a lot of people when the ABS was coming out that didn't want the, the ABS to come in because it was too intrusive. And I guess that leads me to my next subject. You know, I, I don't personally think that the electronics are uh, intrusive at all. Most of the time when you're riding, you're never gonna know that they're there. It's only in those situations where you lose traction on your bike, which hopefully isn't very often for most people. It's only until those situations where the system will even kick in at all. Except, but you know, you have the vehicle hold mode, which you may actually activate voluntarily on on a regular basis which is a good thing and the tire pressure monitoring system you know that's something that i would check almost daily i'm but i'm super conscious about my tire pressure tire pressure is very very important on a motorcycle guys you really want to have the right tire pressure running low tire pressure then your wheels heat up and that's when you have blowouts, which can be very dangerous on a motorcycle. Just those two things alone, the vehicle hold mode and the tire pressure monitoring system, I'd want it just for those two things alone. And if you don't like the traction control, you can always just shut it off too. Yeah, I'm gonna order most of my bikes with it on there. Stay tuned guys for my full review on the Road Glide Limited, one of the brand new models this year. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care, enjoy the ride, bye-bye.